Scene is shown on Egghead Island. Someone said Captain Kobe has escaped. And another replied, Really? The scene shifts to the ground in front of a giant skeleton face where there were pirates. And one of them said, Yahoo! Well, even if he escaped, he's not a rear admiral, is he? Another pirate said, So how much if we kill him? One of them replied, The Cross Guild will pay us. The next scene shows the wanted poster of Captain Kobe created by the Cross Guild, and the prize for Captain Kobe was 500 million. In the next scene, Kobe is shown with other people who were captured. One of those guys says, Thank you, Captain Kobe. You could have gotten away alone, but you didn't. Kobe said, I'll act as bait, you guys. Please get away during then. The scene shifts to one of the commanders of the Blackbeard Pirates sitting in the giant skeleton. He was Shiryu of the Rain and had the Clear Clear Fruit, also known as the Invisible Man. Another commander who looked like a stone and his name was Corrupt King Avalo Pizarro with Island Island Fruit, also known as Island Man. Another commander, Vasco Shot, who ate Glug Glug Fruit, also known as Liquor Human, was also present there. Vasco Shot said, Can I go there? Corrupt King replied, Vasco, what are you doing? Vasco said, They can't get away if we burn the city. Corrupt King replied, Hey, cut that out or you'll start a big fire, meow. Teach will get mad, meow. We just finished fixing up Rocky Port, meow. Vasco said, What better way than to leave it to Wolf? Then we see the giant captain of the Blackbeard Pirates, whose name was the giant colossal battleship San Juan Wolf, who had eaten giant, giant fruit and was also known as Gigantic Man. In the next scene, we see Captain Kobe escaping from other pirates while he was attached with a steel ball. Kobe was running and was saying, I am Kobe the hero. Then we see a previous scene in which Blackbeard was sitting on his throne with his titanic captains, including Aokiji. Blackbeard was saying, Gonna make the pirate island a country, one that's recognized by the world government. I will be the king, King Blackbeard. Kobe said, that's ridiculous. There is no way they will allow that. A country of criminals? Blackbeard said, hey, don't crush people's dreams. I am willing to negotiate for your life. Kobe replied, the government and the military would never give in to such acts of terrorism. Also, I am a part of S.W.O.R.D. Aokiji thinks something, and Blackbeard says, S.W.O.R.D., the hell is that? Aokiji replies, I see. It ain't gonna work then. Give up on the deal, Teach. Another Titanic captain says, In short, this guy is a Marine, but not a Marine at the same time. He doesn't follow the Marine code. The scene comes back to the present, where Kobe was running to escape. As he was running, he heard voices. Marines just showed up at the port! Another voice was heard saying, You've got to be kidding me! And another voice said, He's strong! Kobe said to himself, Someone came to save me? No way! How arrogant! Shame on me! The scene then moves back to a while ago where Blackbeard was sitting. Aokiji explains to Blackbeard about the sword. The sword, so to speak, consists of marines who have already submitted their resignation. That's why these guys can pick a fight with the four emperors without permission from their superiors. It's a ranger squad that can move freely, ignoring all other orders. In return, the navy is not responsible for any of these guys' actions and can fire them at any time. Blackbeard says, I get it now. So they don't need permission from those halfwits to fight us. Ruffians who jump into fights head first, huh? I see. Not bad. But we are not changing the plan. We'll do what we have to do. As long as you are called a hero, the Navy can't just abandon you. I will have the public know about this. That way they can't ignore this matter. In the next scene, we see the scene on the port where the Marines had arrived. The Marines were fighting with pirates and the pirates were saying, Who is this guy? He's super strong. They headed towards the center of the city. Stop them! One of the members of the Marine chopped a pirate's head off with his sword. Another Marine man used his devil fruit as jelly to attack pirates, and furious fighting was going on. Then the pirates saw someone standing on the rooftop. Suddenly, someone jumps from the building down, and she was a girl with a sword in her hand. Pirates were confused about who she was, and pirates were questioning if she was a marine. She was Navy HQ Rear Admiral of Sword. Her name was Jujaku, and she was the granddaughter of Great Advisor Tsuru, and she had the Whip Whip Fruit, which was used for taming. She said to the pirates, I'll tame you. 
the scene shifts to where Kobe was surrounded by pirates, and pirates put guns towards Kobe. Kobe was helpless, and suddenly, out of everyone's guns, flowers started to come out. Pirates got confused and said, Wait a second, what the hell is going on? Kobe self-talked. It's GP Flower who did this. And he saw a woman on the rooftop with a gun. He said to her, Hibari, what are you doing here? To which she replies, Mr. Kobe, come over here this way. That girl was Navy HQ Commander, Sword. Her name was Hibari. Another Marine is shown, and he says to someone on the phone, How's it going, Your Highness? And the person on the phone replies, Just now finished. Kobe is safe as well. That guy was Navy HQ Rear Admiral Sword Prince Groose, who had Goo Goo Fruit and was also known as Clayman. In the next scene, we see a group consisting of a girl, Helmpu, and a furious Garp. The girl announces, Everyone's ready! And the ship takes off in air towards the island, leaving everyone shocked and confused. The pirates, Kobe, and others on board are stunned as they watch Garp standing on the deck, laughing maniacally. The captain of the Titanic, seeing Garp's fury, warns everyone to run away, saying, We need to get off the island! Another captain adds, There's no exit at the plaza! Garp, however, jumps off the ship into the air, shouting, Hey, you lousy pirates! Do you even realize who you have abducted? Kobe is the future of the Navy! Not only that, he is my beloved pupil! Garp looks incredibly furious as he charges up an attack, shouting, Galaxy Impact! and unleashes it with a powerful punch that obliterates the whole village below, leaving destruction in its wake. And the chapter ends. What an intense chapter. It's starting to make a lot more sense why Sengoku stopped Garp at Marineford. Garp's power is truly incredible, and if he had unleashed it at Marineford, the consequences would have been catastrophic. What do you guys think about this chapter? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And hey, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I'll keep uploading new chapters of One Piece and your favorite anime. Just let me know what you want to see. Take care, and until next time.